Hello guys, this is Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel once again! Today's video is a GPU comparison, thing that I haven't done for quite some time, like... I think that the previous one was this one, about RX 580 versus Vega 56 versus RX 5700 XT. If you want to watch it, link is in the description. Well, in today's video it is about Vega 56 versus GTX 1660 Super. And well, most of you will probably say something like But wait man, GTX 1660 Super is like mid-low end, while Vega 56 was like mid-high end when it came out. Well, we are at 2020 and not 2017. 2020 prices are the same and people buying new parts or trying to upgrade think to themselves Vega 56 or GTX 1660 Super. And that's why I'm making this video. And well guys, there's not much more to say, hope you really enjoyed the video, don't forget hit like, subscribe and share this damn good video. Also, leave a comment in the comment section and let's go to the part you really want to see, the benchmarks. See you in the conclusion. Today's first game is Assassin's Creed Odyssey using the inbuilt benchmark. As can be clearly seen, it is impressive how well the GTX 1660 Super handles this game, or better saying, how badly the Vega 56 does it. In the side-by-side -side comparison, you can see that the Vega 56 is using around 140 watts instead of the usual 200 or 220. That means that the card isn't being fully utilized. But that is nothing that the common user wants to know, and the fact is that GTX 1660 Super performs better in any resolution, while consuming way less. Impressive indeed. Our second game is the well-known PUBG. In this game the results are more comparable, with 1080p results being more or less the same. As soon as you go over 1080p the difference starts to get noticeable, maybe due to the small 192-bit buzz of the GTX 1660 Super. Both cards present interesting results, but considering the raw power of Vega 56, I was expecting a bit more of it. Still, not really that bad. Interesting results. Moving on. Now with Rainbow Six Siege, we can finally see Vega 56 being properly utilized. In terms of average FPS, we have a difference of around 15 FPS at 1080p, and even at 1440p ultra-wide, we do have a decent gain of 8 FPS on averages and 6 FPS in the 1% lows. But wait, there's more! We all know that Vega 56 has way more raw power than this GTX 1660 Super, so let's now jump from the X11 to Vulcan API. As you can see, the GTX 1660 Super actually took a massive hit in terms of performance, actually losing around 10 average FPS, but most importantly, losing around 20 FPS in the 1% lows. 
20 FPS. This has to be one of the strangest results I've seen when using Vulkan API. As for Vega 56, it seems that it found the FPS that GTX 1660 super lost. <laughs> we have 20 FPS more in average and around 10 FPS more in the 1% lows. Interesting results with both APIs. Our fourth game is Red Dead Redemption 2, also using the inbuilt benchmark. This time we also have interesting results. While Vega 56 has constantly higher average FPS numbers, the minimum FPS are also considerably lower at 1080p and 1440p. Only at 1440p ultra wide, where our FPS numbers start getting a lot below 60, that Vega 56 finally manages to have higher minimums than GTX 1660 Super. Still, from my own in-game experience, I couldn't really tell the difference at all. What I know though, is that Vega 56 is way faster in this game, and going from 45.7 to 58.6 FPS is a massive difference gameplay-wise, basically making stutters into smoothness. So if you want to mostly play Red Dead Redemption 2, Vega 56 is the way. This time with The Division 2. In this game we can see once again how massive the raw power difference is. Since this game properly utilizes both cards, Vega 56 shows us a massive win over GTX 1660 Super. At 1080p we see a difference of 27 average FPS and 15 FPS in the 1% lows. With Vega 56 the game feels smooth even at 1440p ultra wide, having 70 average FPS while the GTX can only give us around 52, which is playable, but not 70 FPS playable. Moving on. Father would kill me if he finds out I went up with you. Twice if he learns we've been to a Hansa off-limits zone. Our first gameplay test is with Metro Exodus in the first Moscow mission using ultra settings and no tessellation. And damn! These results are the most impressive results so far. That may also be due to the fact that I was using DX12 and we all know how bad can be Nvidia's DX12 GPU implementation, but still, the difference is huge. We are talking of around 30 FPS difference at 1080p Ultra. 30 FPS. I mean, Vega 56 1% lows are higher than the averages on GTX 1660 Super in any resolution. And that means a lot by itself. Moving to the next game. Now with the recently released Need for Speed Heat. Besides being a racing game, Need for Speed Heat is actually pretty demanding in terms of GPU, but also in terms of CPU. The results are fairly close at 1080p, but once we raise the resolution, we see GTX 1660 Super falling behind. And once we go to 1440p ultra wide, the difference gets pretty big. With Vega 56 delivering acceptable results, while the GTX 1660 Super drops to 37.3 FPS in the 1% lows, which for me isn't acceptable at all. Basically, this card will maintain numbers up to 1440p, but if you go over that, the results will sink. Still, nothing new, since GTX 1660 Super is a 1080p or maybe sometimes a 1440p card. The 
last game of today is Forza Horizon 4. This is using the benchmark, but this benchmark produces pretty realistic results, so it's kind of fine. I'm using extreme settings with 2 times MSAAA. MSAA, sorry. <laughs> and well, the results are pretty consistent. Vega 56 indeed takes the lead in every resolution, but the GTX 1660 Super handles itself pretty well. The only difference is at 1440p ultra wide, where Vega 56 can still produce a smooth 60fps gameplay, where the GTX 1660 Super will sometimes drop to lower 50s. Overall, good results here. Let's move to the conclusion. Well guys, concluding. Vega 56 or GTX 1660 Super? Well, once again, it depends. It depends in what you want, for example, in what is your objective. Overall, Vega 56 is indeed, no doubts, faster. Both cards are overclocked, as you've seen before. In fact, Vega 56 is overclocked and undervolt. As you can see, for example, from this tutorial, from this guide of how to do it, 1600 MHz on core and 920 MHz on the HBM2 VRAM, while the GTX 1660 Super is around 2040, yes, 2040 on the core and 7300 MHz on VRAM. Two things, in my opinion, to take in consideration overall performance and power consumption. Okay, Vega 56 out of the box is not that good sadly because most Vega cards come really really overvolted and underclocked. They can do a lot higher with lower voltages but they don't come that way. Uh, they really don't come that way. So the card is like underperforming at stock. As for GTX 1660 Super, yes, you can still you can still uh, get more performance while overclocking, but nothing astonishing as Vega 56. Vega 56 gets way better results from overclocking and undervolting at the same time. But yeah, overall, both cards overclocked, Vega 56 is faster. Taking off, for example, one title, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, it is faster, Vega 56. But you need to take into consideration the power consumption. For people living in first world countries, uh, or at least countries where, where the electricity bill is not that high, well, it won't really matter because maybe uh, in the end of the year you'll, you'll have like, let's say, $15 difference. So it means actually, it, it actually means nothing, okay? But for people, for example, that uh, where the, w people that live in countries where the, the, electricity, the, elect <laughs> the electricity bill is like way, way more expensive comparing to their salaries, then well, you may consider a GTX 1660 Super because while Vega, while Vega 56 consumes around uh, this, under Volt, of course, it consumes around uh, 200 to 220 watts, the GTX 1660 Super overclocked consumes around 130 watts. So 70 to 90 watts less. It is a lot guys, it is a lot. Basically, if you don't care about power consumption and you want the max performance you can get and the long lasting GPU, Vega 56 is the way because it has way more raw power, more raw performance, so it will last longer because the games will get more optimized and Vega 56 will keep getting better and better uh, as the time goes on. This for a long lasting GPU. Now, if you are building a really really small, for example, a really, really small computer, or if you are living in a country well, where electricity bills are really, really expensive comparing to the salaries, well, you may consider, in fact, the GTX 1660 Super is a really small card, not hot at all, not hot at all, so the temperatures are fine, the, um, the loudness, so the noise is not that much, and you have a pretty good performing card consuming 130 watts max uh, and giving a really, really good performance uh, if we compare performance and power consumption against the Vega 56. But, but in my opinion, those are the only scenarios where it, com it compensates to get indeed the GTX 1660 over the Vega 56. And well guys, that's all for today. Thanks a lot for watching, really thank you a lot for watching. Don't forget, hit like, subscribe, share this video. 
comment in the comment section your opinion about these two cards and most importantly leave in fact your doubts in the comment section because I will answer as fast as I can and I will try to help you the best way possible. Thanks a lot one more time and see you in the next video.